trust now, sir. Andrew from Hoi Wing Chun again, and we've got JT. Well, of course we have, because we're doing all of this in one day, so uh, we don't just wear the same clothes all the time. Uh, well, yeah. J Jake does. But, uh, so we've, I've spoken a bit about the offensive nature of our Wing Chun rather than the defensive, path, what we call passive way of doing it. Uh, as well as that, I s we made another video a bit about the structure of our Yiji Kim Yang Ma. Actually, I'll go into more about that because Yiji Kim Yang Ma is only just the very beginning of it, so we might do another one after this. But anyway, then we talked about the Jun Ma, the turns, which is for us the heart of our Wing Chun, the power. The ability not only to hit with more power through your arms, but put you in a good uh, uh, what would you call it? Good position in terms of an oncoming attack, but also it powers our footwork. We don't sort of push with the feet and step. It's it's all driven by the the jun ma. And uh, the other thing, I guess, which is foundational here. So I, I've mentioned in the before that Yi Ji Kim Yang Ma is the number one. The jun ma. It's actually the third one that, that we think. When I learned it traditionally from Sifu, when I did the Wong Jiao style Wing Chun training, uh, foundations in that are need to be, because of the nature of the system, you have got to have really powerful foundations just to do it. Uh, the beauty of the Yip Man style is you can kind of get away without having to have such powerful foundations and make a pretty decent, if you do it, train properly, you can make a pretty reasonably good style of Kung Fu. The other one, because of the nature of the system and the efficiencies that are in it, uh, you need, you must have the foundations to really make it work. So when I learned that one, the first maybe five, four to five months was nothing but that for hours every day. Once Sifu was happy with that, he started the punches. Punches are quite different to the uh, the, the Yip Man stuff. So he had to punch for about eight months, nothing but standing in the stance and doing the punches, single center line punches. After about maybe eight months and nothing but that, it was Junma, tons of Junma, until Sifu was happy with that. So for a good, uh, roughly 18 months of doing that kind of training, uh, all you learn is three things. But those three things are the heart and soul of what you're doing in Wing Chun, hence why they're so important and why you do so much of them. So we've talked a bit about the Jun Ma. Now I'll talk a bit about why we do these punches. I'm not sure how many people train at them. You know, I get, I get the impression that most people jump straight to uh, these sorts of things. Uh, I'm not going to call them chain punches, I really don't like that name, but anyway. What we train at a lot is uh, Chi Wing Chun. I don't speak Cantonese, but my Sifu's from Hong Kong, so I heard it all from him. My pronunciation's probably way off, so I apologise for that. But, uh, we just call them single center line punches. So they start off from the back here, and you punch like so. Uh, they are absolutely crucial and foundational to everything we're going to do in our Wing Chun, why we spend so much time doing them. Um, <coughs> in terms of practicality and direct application, which a lot of people think everything in Wing Chun has to have a direct application or it's useless. Uh, for us, that's... If, if you went through Wing Chun, uh, this, the forms and so on, 
and said, all right, if you try these punches in a fight, you're going to get knocked out, so let's throw them all away. If you did so, and you, if you went through every step of the system like that and uh, did that, uh, you'd ruin your Wing Chun. Just press pause and 